I've never come across anybody who didn't like Sean Porter. For that matter, what's not to like? Porter's always smiling, except when he's fighting. In the ring, his intensity can burn a hole right through his opponent. At the age of 29 and with a record of 26, 2, and 1, Porter finds himself a former champion who's very much still in his prime. And big opportunities will keep coming for two reasons. First, Porter fights in the hottest and deepest division in boxing, welterweight. And second, Porter always brings it. World champions come in all shapes and sizes. At the start of his pro career, Porter had to reinvent himself. As a high school football star, he weighed 180 pounds. In his pro boxing debut, he scaled 165. But standing only five foot six, he sensed that if he wanted to be successful at the highest level, he had to gradually drop down to 147 pounds. Showbox was the perfect vehicle for him to do so, and Porter made his first appearance on premium cable in 2009. 22-year-old Sean Porter is an aggressive volume puncher who's been busy as a pro. This will be his 12th fight in his 14-month career. Four of his next six fights were on Showbox, and in his third appearance, he weighed in at the welterweight limit for the first time. One other thing fighting on Showbox allowed Porter to do was tinker with his boxing style. Yes, it is. Oh, it is Robinson with a jab, and Robinson is down. Initially, Porter spent a lot of time moving in and out and boxing on his toes. He was far quicker than most of his opponents, but this style didn't always allow for him to take full advantage of his natural aggressiveness. Despite the experimentation, Porter managed to score a couple of breathtaking one-punch KOs. And now he's got him dropped. Right hand, Raul Pinzon is rubbed off the map inside round one. Down goes Patterson with a left hook. Sean Porter gets the job done against Jamar Patterson. And the Porter Express keeps on rolling. In his first fight following his Showbox graduation, Porter took a major step up in opposition and challenged former lightweight world champion Julio Diaz. A very nice mix right now of Porter, of, of speed, movement, and combination punching. He's a very athletic fighter with a lot of speed, but he's also very small. So does he want to be a pressure fighter or does he want to move and box? At times during the fight, he still seemed unsure of his ring identity. Diaz starting to find a home for that right hand. Another good chopping right hand, and that got Porter's attention. And the tenor of this fight changing ever so slowly here. Good left hand by Diaz. Very good shot. And a right hand by Diaz. It's going to be fascinating to hear what the judges this say about goal. this. And a big last round, really for both men. Diaz ending it well. Porter starting it well. His tentativeness cost him, and he was held to a draw. The decision is even a draw. But in the rematch 10 months later, Porter relied on what he does best, apply pressure, smother his opponent, and then outwork him. He fought with self-assurance in beating Diaz by unanimous decision. In December 2013, Porter challenged IBF welterweight titleist Devin Alexander at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. The bell in round one scheduled for 12. Style-wise, it was an ideal matchup for Porter. The champion Alexander again gets tagged with a left hook. And as early as the third round, it was clear that the Southpaw couldn't hope to outslick the now characteristically aggressive challenger. Coming forward is Porter, lands another nifty jab, one-two combination, and now a firefight breaking up. It was a bloody fight, and at times an ugly one. Not all that unusual for Porter. Porter continuing to smother Alexander. The scores were fairly close, but also unanimous for the new champion. And the new I'm In his first world championship bout at the age of 26, undefeated Showtime Sean Porter becomes the new IBF welterweight champion. Porter's first defense came in April 2014 and stands as his most dominant major win. He faced former world titleist Pauli Malignaggi. In retrospect, it might seem like the familiar storyline of a young and rising star versus a faded veteran. But in fact, Malignaggi was coming off a spirited split decision loss to Adrian Broner and a clear-cut win over Zab Judah. 
Frenetic start to this championship affair. Pauli Malinacci, he's already cut underneath the left eye. It's another clubbing right hand. It was more of a mugging than a fight. Porter again crowding him, and making a rough and tumble, landing the right hand. Oh, and Malinacci gets tagged with a couple of left hands, holding on. Man, what a beard does Malinacci sport. He gets clobbered with another right hand. Porter broke through late in the third, then savagely finished Malinaji in the fourth. I don't know how Malinaji's still standing. Another right cross by Porter. Malinaji in trouble along the ropes. The ropes are holding him up, and he goes down. After the second knockdown, the referee waved the fight over without issuing a count. And he is not getting up. Sean Porter has a successful first title defense as welterweight champion. What an onslaught. What the Malinaji fight showed me was that Porter had become somewhat of an unusual type of fighter. A welterweight who applied suffocating pressure, but who did so with exceptional hand speed and athleticism. In August 2014, Brooke came to the United States to challenge Porter. Age 28, he's come across the pond to try and win this world title. If Alexander and Malinaji had been good style matchups for Porter, England's unbeaten Kell Brook was all wrong. He's a tall, rangy, big welterweight, and his game plan was sound. Draw Porter in and counterpunch. Kell Brook likes to fight at a controlled, precise pace. There's a nice counterpunch. That's important for him. And if ineffective, with his counters unashamedly clinch and grab, anything to prevent Porter from fighting at his desired range. A different referee might have penalized him. Regardless, Brook landed the cleaner punches throughout. You know, it's the, the activity of Porter against the nice power shots of Brook. Highlighted by a big 11th round. It's the, the small detail work that Brook's doing. And the new The judges scored by majority decision for Brooke, whom I thought was the winner. A few chosen fighters are given opportunity after opportunity. Porter had to earn his second chance. Two fights later, Porter faced another former world champion, Adrian Broner, who was coming up from 140 pounds. They met at a catch weight of 144, and the question on everybody's mind was, what would those three less pounds do to Porter? What was apparent almost from the start was that while Broner was looking for the perfect counter, Porter was willing to punch consistently, sometimes hitting and sometimes missing, but comfortably winning most of the rounds. Broner held far too much, and this is exactly where Sean Porter's got to be right there. You see, he's getting his hands free. He's digging the body of Adrian and finishing back up top. Adrian's looking to hold on because he doesn't like Sean Porter being that close to him. Good shot by Sean Porter. Adrian Broner holding again. Just relentless. You see if Tony Weeks continues to let Adrian Broner just grab a hold of Sean and hold him like that and it eventually cost him when the referee penalized him in round 11. I think Tony's gonna take a point right here. One, one point. Maybe the point deduction awoke Broner because 10 seconds into the 12th, he struck with a perfectly timed hook. But the first knockdown of Porter's pro career had no impact on the outcome. Porter won by deserved, unanimous decision. It would take a full year, but Porter's win over Broner led to the biggest fight of his career, a clash with undefeated welterweight titleist Keith Thurman at Barclays Center in June 2016. Thurman Porter was wonderfully intense, fast-paced, and competitive throughout. A close encounter of the welterweight kind. Right cross by Thurman. In the fourth, Thurman almost drove Porter down. Heavy exchange, oh, and Porter's knee buckled after that left, and the veteran holds on immediately. But on this night, momentum was difficult to maintain, and Porter rallied in the fifth and sixth. That time, the right hand got through for Porter, goes to the body, and now trying to absorb the onslaught from Porter. Oh, and 
Thurman coming back with a couple of left hooks. In the eighth, he hurt Thurman with a body punch. Good work to the body that hurt Thurman. And in the ninth, they traded toe to toe. Bombs away in Brooklyn. It was that type of back and forth fight. In the 12th, the fighters fought furiously, a fitting ending to an instant classic that surpassed what had been very high expectations. Keith Thurman, Sean Porter putting it all on the line. No wonder then that it ended up on everybody's short list for fight of the year. And still. All three judges scored 115-113 for Thurman, and my unofficial card was the same. Had it been scored a draw, I doubt there would have been a single complaint. As well as Porter fought against Thurman, a loss is a loss, and once again, he finds himself in the position of trying to secure another world title opportunity. By taking on former titleist Andre Berto on April 22nd, Porter has again opted for a difficult road. Make no mistake, he'll be favored to beat Berto, but coming off a loss and a 10-month layoff, there were plenty of easier opponents for him to choose. Then again, we wouldn't expect anything less from Porter, a championship-caliber welterweight who's repeatedly proven that in victory or defeat, he's always going to perform like a pure fighter.